Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful weather. Thank you that spring is coming. It's like your mercies every day that come new. We love you and we thank you. Help us do your business tonight. Help us to have peace and grace in this meeting. In name I pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the fact that you have a minute from the March 5th meeting, motion to approve. Motion. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussions or All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Ms. Chamber of Representatives. She is here. She is here. She's back. She's hiding in the back. Hi. Nice Welcome to back. I saw a ghost in uh, this week the Chamber Tourism Committee reviewed the tourism account balance since I haven't been back in a while. We're really concerned about the balance of that account. Uh, we would respectfully like to ask the Finance Committee to take a look at the revenues on that. Which one? Uh, tourism. Tourism, okay. Um, see if we can do anything about some collections. We know we have issue with one in the past. Um, same one? Yeah, same one. Okay. Um, so I'll, I can get with you at another time about okay. that if you like. Yeah. So, in reaction to that to the tourism committee last year the amount started getting low we made action by reducing the amount of publication ads we didn't do any publication ads after spring last year to help that balance it's not helping anymore so the action we're going to take going forward is to reduce the amount of allocation that we give to clubs and organizations for events by about 50 percent um, to see how we can help going forward um, saying that, we have received an application for tourism funds from the JCs for their 2019 barbecue cook-off. They have applied for $5,000, but because of the, the balance of the account, the Tourism Committee is recommending an allocation of $2,500. I'm asking you all to approve that tonight, if you see fit. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion second. second. In favor, say aye. 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 And we will look into it, okay? Well, if, you, if you'd like me to meet with you, I'd be glad okay. to. Yeah, anytime it's convenient for you. That's all I have. Call. Do you have anything for me? Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good way to find us. Well, <laughs> I've got some bad news too. This is our second month that we're down on, on our sales tax one and two. That's they came in at 125, 760, 129. The other one was uh, 125, 196, 40. With that being said, we're still within projected income. We have projected less income for this for this year, so we're still within, but we're down for the second month in a row. We have five good months previous, and now we're starting to see a downtrend. So let's hope that it stops. Next Does month. that go in line with uh, last year's trend or anything at all? You know, uh, I've got those numbers last here. Month. Last year it was 131, 637, but the previous year was only 120. So it's down from last year, but it's up from the year before. So as long as we're within, within with the projected numbers, we're okay for now. Uh, use tax came up. Uh, about five thousand fifty-two dollars. It was forty-one seven forty-three, and that's a bigger amount than we had projected per month when we start getting the use tax. Right. So we're seeing some online buying, and we're getting more use tax, and that reflects on the sales tax one and two. Uh, transportation tax was sixty-two five ninety-eight, and the storm and senior. Uh, tax was 62359 and that's in line with what we're beginning. So we'll keep an eye for the next few months until the budget year is over and we'll start working on the new budget year. On our budget we're operating within or under budget so that's, that's all so encouraging. <laughs> The partners are doing a real yeah. good job controlling the cost. Appreciate it. 
That's all I have. Do you want to close meeting at the I don't have anything for the public at this time. Please. I think everything's going good. Uh, I don't have anything right now. Bill is absent tonight. Uh, he's attending a meeting with some state officials on my behalf. Uh, you want to bring anything at this point or you want to wait for us? Just for the committee point of view, uh, we might try to have a street committee meeting next Tuesday night on a regular night. We'll let everybody know if everything falls together. We're ready for that. Stormwater? Nothing really. I have put something minor in the report. Do you want to give any of the good news on Third Street? I'll, I'll put it all together. You say it? Okay. <laughs> Department of Forest, John. Uh, sitting today, uh, or <coughs> submitted it today for the emergency management program grant. Once again, we were, we ran around uh, nineteen thousand five hundred dollars, and it's a little bit more than that. Last year, we were able to buy a, a dedicated laptop and a state-of-the-art uh, uh, ID maker. And we bought it right about December because we knew start in January to be the new grant period. So this grant period, we're, uh, we put in for the card stock and a few other items to go along with it. And it'll give us the ability to make some quality double-sided ID cards for all city employees plus all council. The big thing is, is we... 2009 we went across this you get volunteers that you hire either for a period of time to help the inspections or cleanup and people want to know who they are so this gives us the ability to quickly produce a non-reproducible ID card that you can get volunteers and stuff registered in so the other thing that came with it was a inventory <coughs> label printer where you can make these tough labels that you can put on every anything in all the departments and get, maybe the city can end up getting a better picture of what we own and what we have on hand. So that's just part of uh, last year's and this year's we're going to try to finish it up and get that online. So uh, most likely once you're in the M, the emergency management program grant program, unless you went way overboard over last year, they cut you back down. We should be within the range to be able to get that approved. So, uh, the other thing, you have it up there on your packet. Last night we had the uh, uh, we had a meeting with um, public hearing uh, for our derelict buildings here in this room. Um, there were 16, there actually was 17 on the list, but one we weren't able to get the notice to, so that disqualifies that piece of property for this round. So out of 16, one of them was repairable, and the owner has agreed to get a building permit. Yeah. So uh, he should be getting repairs shortly. Ten of the structures were deemed not feasible for repair due to the deteriorating condition and posed an imminent danger to life, health, and safety to the community. Uh, these were, 10 were approved by the fire committee to be demolished. Four other structures were given extensions from 30 to 90 days, either repair or be demolished, and we'll follow up with those. Um, and out of the ones that were deemed to be demolished, several had uh, expressed that they would demolish the structure themselves, thus saving us some money. One structure, the owner just acquired the property. It was noted he's made substantial improvements and we'll monitor it. It's kind of unfair for him to take the brunt, but he has done a lot of cleanup. I noticed that for the meetings. Uh, the next phase will be to solicit for bids to begin the demolishing process. So we can look at about a 60 day period because you have to get a 30 day bid out there and you open them up and you have to notify the people 
And if there's anything inside the structures they might want, they need to remove it. And we're going to start beginning another round of additional structures to be submitted for another public hearing. So, slow, but a little bit of progress. Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. How much money do we set aside for these properties every year? Uh, or is it, or is it fluctuate know, every year? Uh, it fluctuates every year. We have 134000 available for that purpose. If, for just tearing down the properties? No, well, I think it's a good thing. And clean up, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a good thing. Which is another thing that trying to get some stuff together where we can approach you that maybe this spring we concentrate on these box springs, mattresses, and couches. Mm -hmm. And we may, we may have to put bids up to see who would want to do it, but we're, we're looking at some avenues where there may be a few funds to help us with it. So we're going to bring that back and see the council. Uh, with that, um, I have a fire report there for the month of February. Had a total of um, 75 calls within the city, eight out of the city. And uh, they're again <coughs> trying to reduce down uh, the amount, amount of non essential medical calls. I have salt and councilman. Weatherwax, the end of the day, we're, we're just not a home health agency. So when it becomes two and three times that people call and all they need is maybe assistance getting up off the floor or something like that, that you know, it, it, we basically just have to refer them to home health or whatever because. We have first we're putting people at risk for back strains and injuries, and it takes them away from what they're doing at the firehouse, maintaining the equipment or whatever. If it's a dire emergency, then we're going to go. I mean, that's just the way we operate emergencies. So, some if you get any feedback on it, let me know. But um, you know, with the limited personnel, that's that's what we have to do. So. Uh, we're looking at ways that we can reduce some of that so that we're uh, not just spending all of our time uh, out and away from other things that need to be done. So, uh, you'll look at the portal if you've got a question, you can give me a call on it. And uh, I appreciate it. If uh, you had any luck getting any more community service workers, they haven't seen you. Yeah, we need to do something about that. <clears throat> I talked to the chief of police on that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we haven't seen it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's over the program? Stokely. Stokely. Walt Deering is the head of it in Stokely Works for are they going somewhere else, or just not I going? Mean, just really don't like getting a lot of community service. I talked to Judge Mayer once before, not too long ago, and about trying to get more community service. That way, we try to get some of this cleaned up a little. Okay. Uh, one of the things on the status of the neutral cars, or old cars right now, we want to clarify on, on that, too, is that we've also talked about uh, in order to get more, maybe just go straight from the court to the police department or whatever. Yeah. That's been discussed. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the council on the new patrol cars, the old cars right now, currently getting equipment stripped out of them. Hopefully by the end of next week, the new cars will be back in service. So we're looking forward to getting those. Uh, we also have two people who have applied for position of police officer. Both have passed their background checks. Uh, We'll be holding interviews this week with these two individuals. Hopefully, but they're both uh, potential academy candidates. So our interest in the academy program is kind of trying to pick up a little steam. So hopefully, at least one of these guys will pan out and we'll get them soon. And in your packet, you have the uh, crime report for the month of February. You'll see the, the call for service is 1,267 calls handled through our dispatch center. Uh, some of that does include fire calls and calls and also for the police department. Uh, fairly busy month. 
considering kind of weather we had for the month of February, and it's, it's getting warmer, we're going to start getting busy. So, other than that, that's all I have for the council. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Step on a couple of topics real quick. Uh, weather with all the rain has been tough on your streets this year, this winter, the spring, uh, with all the freezing and thawing and all the moisture in it. If you're driving up and down the streets, uh, be aware that you're, especially on your concrete, at your joints, at your seams, and in your panels, you're going to see a lot of popped out, concrete popped out at those joints. That's where moisture has gotten in there. And frozen and popping it there on those edges. Um, I feel like we brought it up before, but I feel like we're going to have to start looking at doing some crack sealing uh, one way or another uh, to slow down some of that damage. Uh, we're still two employees short. Uh, we looked at a couple of people that they just started paying out for us. So we're still got to help one to sign out. Uh, Third Street. Give you the good first. Uh, right after the last council meeting, the uh, contractor finished putting in the pipe and finished the backfill, and we got the street pretty well leveled out. And uh, these guys have been working for a couple of days trying to clean up the edges and make it where the people can move along the edge of the street and cleaning up the lots that still like gas and water leather shoes there off Anthony. So that's coming along pretty good. We still got a little bit more to do. Uh, we've got the concrete poured up at Anthony and uh, Third and Cary. Uh, if everything works out, we'll open that Thursday uh, to, to, to traffic. On the southbound lane, there'll be one small panel we still got to fix. We left it open so people could get in and out of the driveway there for say like gas and water to get into their window. So we've still got to come back in there, but they'll be able to get in from the north. They won't be able to get in from the south, but they'll be able to still get in from the north there. So the driveway drive through will still be open. And then we'll move over to Hopper uh, and we'll tear that out for the contractor so we can pour that pipe. The last two rains have yeah, been evil on us and uh, reared their ugly head and, uh, right down at Buffalo Ditch over there on 3rd Street. We've got a couple of holes in the shoulder. Uh, it's not really complicated but it is. There's Two drains going into the ditch. Uh, one of them's an old concrete drain. Uh, they ran the camera up in there today, and got what, 12, 15 feet, something like that, and found the city sanitary sewer force main running through it. Well, there's some holes on up there, fence, the chain link fence there around a holding pond, so that's probably where that's coming from. But out closer to the street, we've got a hole so square and over waist deep. Uh, that we're pretty sure it's on our existing galvanized line that might be replaced up. Uh, so we'll be looking into that. We can't dig in there until tomorrow for the permits and so on. So we'll just have to see how much that's bad, how far it goes, what we might be able to do in house versus you know having possibly bring contractors back in. So we're also working with uh, City Light Gas and Water. Uh, Last Friday night, uh, serious enough that I stayed with Dave Wilkins uh, from about 5.15 to after 7 o'clock uh, last Friday night down on 5th and, and uh, Tico. They've got a sanitary sewer problem down through there. Uh, been working on it uh, the last two weeks plus this week. Uh, we took the camera truck in there today to try to help them. And <coughs> So much sand in a 15 inch line that they we can't get the camera through there in places but other places because of that <coughs> there's enough water that we can't get through so uh, they've had to bypass pump down there a couple of different times so uh, we're almost 100 percent sure that there's a problem under our street under fifth street somewhere we just don't know exactly where so we'll probably end up with a pretty good size hole in that eventually uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to find the hole and not have to dig up a large area to do that, but the sewer is very deep there too. So, uh, Keith, what, we have 12, 14 feet probably today is where you all were? Yeah. So, so 
so you, you know, if you work back in that area, uh, probably using, you know, they said today they'd probably be using contractors for that. So, once we pay. So, good news and bad news. I guess that's progress, right? <coughs> Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Did you finish the approval of the city after that? Second. First. Second. Okay. Do you have a motion to approve? Yeah, yeah. All right. Second. Yep. All right. 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 Motion. Second. Motion second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. First reading, it's an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign on behalf of the city of Kennett, Missouri, and the city court to attest thereto an agreement between the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission and the city of Kennett, Missouri, for the Missouri Highway and Transporta Transportation Commission to provide city breath alcohol instruments to be used to obtain breath alcohol samples. Uh, what this is is a program where the uh, basically MoDOT Missouri Highway Transportation Commission is going to purchase uh, breathalyzers for the city to have. Uh, right now, uh, the city's for years the city's been using uh, the breathalyzer at the county jail. Uh, that hasn't been all that reliable. Uh, it's down a lot. And this will allow the city to have one of their own at the same time and also be more efficient. And at no cost to the city. <coughs> Motion. Aye. 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 Second reading an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign on behalf of the city of Kennett. Missouri and the city clerk to attest thereto an agreement between the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission and the city of Kennett, Missouri for the, the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission to provide the city breath alcohol, the city breath alcohol instruments to be used to obtain breath alcohol samples. Motion. Second. Okay. Yeah, this would be a roll call. Aye. Yes. 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 Uh, no, it's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, <coughs> that's the yeah. 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 We have a missing man here in Kennedy. His name is uh, William Swinton. He's been missing since uh, March the 10th, and he resides on Floyd Street. That's where he was living. And I don't know too much about it. I heard that he went to the hospital in Haytown, and he started walking home, and he haven't been seen since then. But the main reason I'm here, people are talking about the police department. So no police, you know, we filed a report, a police report was filed, but nobody has came in our community and asked no questions about him and ran around looking for him. And I think this needs to be kind of looked into because he is a human and he's never been in jail. He's kind of, I ain't gonna say it's hard, but he's kind of mad, it's kind of bad. And this is a picture of him. This is William Swinton, and we need to try to help find him if anybody can. But the, pol the police department is getting a bad name saying they don't care about us. If it was somebody else, they, they would be out looking, but we haven't seen them come through the neighborhood trying to help find William. He's 64 years old, and that's what I came here for to see. If we can get some police out, as of course we go to his house on Floyd Street. Nobody, no police have been there trying to investigate anything. I ask no question. 
and this is a big concern to me because are you aware of that, Ken? Yes, we're very aware of it. He's been entered into uh, NCIC as a missing person, National Crime Information Center. And also today he was updated into a, a program called uh, Know Us. It's uh, actually uh, funded by the, the federal government for missing persons. So he was updated into that. And also Missouri State Highway Patrol has issued a civil care alert for the man. So. There's three different agencies right there that have the information out there. We have officers that have been looking for him. Obviously, we've been to his residence several times, checking his residence. Have you been He's nowhere to be found. I'm have you sorry? been inside the residence? Yes, they've inside. been inside. So, uh, they've been checking the area in Haytow. We've been in contact with Haytow officers. They've had a couple of reports of him walking around in town, and so far they've not been able to locate him. Are the sheriff's uh, departments in Pemiscott and Dunklin looking? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, they yes. Was called. And I also got up to the sheriff here. He said he would do the best he can. But uh, I thank you for sharing that with me because they got out that you weren't doing nothing. And yeah. that's the reason why I showed up tonight. <laughs> and I thank you for sharing that okay. with me. I'll let him You're welcome. Do you know, does he have any kind of dementia? Well, that's what I was saying. I said, all this dementia that came up since he'd been missing. Yeah. Missing. Why didn't he say that at first? He would always ride his bike. I don't know. That's why I asked. Does he? Yeah. Well. That's what they're saying now. That's what oh. they said on Facebook. When he yeah, that's what I said. Well, that's what they said. <laughs> since he'd been missing, those words was never brought up when he was out, out and about. But now they're saying, yeah, the mission. I never heard that before until he became missing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that's scary. Yeah, we appreciate it's you bringing this to the attention and clarifying some of the misconceptions. And yeah. Well, I think everyone's concerned. I've seen it on Facebook. And, uh, and I'm glad I came out to hear yeah. what you had to say so I can tell them. Okay. Y'all, they're working on it. Yeah, we are. We're doing best we can. All the officers are familiar with All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm here to address the alley on Wilson Street again. They come down and they put what I would say is dirt in it. And it's already all washed away in this big pot that was there again. I don't know if maybe they can bring that gravel. I talked to them just earlier and they said maybe since we've got the tree lined out, they can bring the grater down now. So it just it needs to be regraded again because the holes down there are horrible. Okay. Are you aware of that? Yeah, we talked to them a while ago. We put what we consider gravel road material in there before, which is a mixture of uh, millings. Mm -hmm clay gravel and chat and uh, was put in there before and smoothed out. So, you know, maybe we can try something else. But it's a, it's a real sharp curve there and the truck, the uh, trash trucks are, I mean, we're guessing they're probably what, you know, pushing it around with their weight right there on the corner. It's always a trash truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a narrow alley and there's not much it reason, is. not much reason for, any, you know, big trucks to put in there unless they're, because yeah, I even asked what? about the Wilson Fire. Street there. You know, yeah, a couple meetings ago. I, I thought it was all taken care of. It's just so much it rain has come. It's just, it's washed it back to the side it's now. It's just, it's just as bad as it was. Thanks for letting us know. I appreciate y'all fixing it. Thank we you. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Good evening. Good evening, I'm just here because I have just one question that I want to address to the council as well as the city of Kent. Where does the city stand on block parties? The reason why I ask this, are they sanctioned, are they allowed, and do they have to be coordinated before one arbitrary takes place? Yeah, I mean, on this one. Uh, there is no sanctioning for block parties. There is no formal... Uh, Provisions in any of our ordinances regarding block parties. Do they block the street? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they do. They block the entire intersection. And I mean, the police came by last year and they told the kids that they had a curfew of 10 o'clock. But that's not what concerns me. What concerns me is the fact that our kids don't have anything to do once the school year is over with. So we start arbitrarily having block parties in neighborhoods but our kids have nothing to do. And this takes up a lot of the police department's time when they should be on something else. So I just want clarification on where we stand as a city on block parties. Can somebody just 
out off the wall, just pull one out of your pocket and say, we're going to have a block party and just close off the street? The answer is no. I mean, uh, the answer formally is no, there is no provisions in the ordinances regarding block parties. There have been instances in the past where they've come to the council. People have come to the council before, block off a certain street for a certain period of time, uh, and most of the time that's been allowed. But as far as just, have as far as just throwing up the, uh, throwing up barricades or just, or just or just standing out in the road and having a ball party, no, there is no provisions for that. And because uh, it ought to be like, I mean, you even have to have, don't you have to have certification to have a garage sale? Yeah. 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 So basically, yeah, you yeah, can't impede the flow of traffic. Is what you said. Yeah. This is about. what I'm. So trying people are standing in the middle of the road, <coughs> and you want to know what to do with people mm -hmm. standing in the middle of the road. Yes. What can they do? Like just call, call the police. Please. Can we make some kind of permit required so that the police could say, let me see your permit right. or whatever? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. There shouldn't be no block parties. Period. Well, there shouldn't be block parties. <laughs> 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 if, they're, if they're blocking the no, street, I mean, block the street. Mm -hmm. no, you can't no. block an intersection, but... Well, but there has to be. But, but what, what has been done in the past, and it's, it hasn't been done very often, the people will come and say we're going to have this event, right? And we will need to and to, the, and to have this event. We will block off the road, usually not a major, you know, not not a major road, right? And the council or the committee has granted that permission, mm -hmm. and uh, but the kids aren't going to come and ask permission for that. That's well, right. We and they're not going to block party. Right. Whether, whether we have it in the ordinance, yeah. right. the kids are not going to come and ask for it. No, but the police will have something to ask for. They, they, they just tell them they don't have to ask for anything. They yeah. don't move yeah. out of the street. They have the authority to move. If it's simple, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Off the street. To be totally honest with you, can't get in yard. this is no. not necessarily the case because when I came up, we had block parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the block parties were also chaperoned by adults. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you had refreshments and you had beverages and you had food. Mm -hmm. There's no beverages and there's no food. It's just a bunch of people standing around. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a block party. <laughs> I don't know what kind of party you call it, but it ain't a block party. <laughs> Right. Just like a it just sounds party. like a firecracker problem without the firecracker. Without the firecrackers. Yeah. Right. Where's this going on? Now? <coughs> well, it's 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 happening over in the uh, oh, ball, ball in addition over here in this side of town in the book in uh, Ward One. Mr. Wayne. Yep. Yeah. 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 Next time it's going on, we'll have officers down there and we'll clear it up. Because, okay. I mean, I just, just didn't want to say, you know, I'm causing a problem for anyone, but I just want to make sure that all of our citizens understand that we do have laws and ordinances in place to protect the citizens who are taxpayers in this town. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not against kids having fun, but just standing around and loitering yeah. and leaning on other people's property, having no respect for anybody else's property. That's totally something out of my ballpark. Yeah, I can't do that. So I just want to bring this to you all's attention. And I, I want to say, I'm kind of like Kay. The answer, I didn't get no answer from this. I think if they're going to have a block party, they need to go through some legal steps. Like that when they have a yard sale, have something to show. The thing is, is, like Mr. McVeigh said, they never would do that. However, I was just thinking, it would be a reason to shut it down immediately. And I'm not saying you can't without it. I just thought yeah, it would no. have a reason to do that. Say, no, just like a garage sale, mm -hmm. you have to have this piece of paper. She's, she was thinking of this party. It's like you used to have it, growing up. I went to those kind of parties. I mean, they're really not <laughs> black parties. That's not what that one is. Yeah, it is. No. But you're right, it's not really a party. They're just, they're blocking the intersection of the street. They're beating the floor. Yes, exactly. That's they completely different. They drive to nothing. And just go. You know, I'm not kicking against them. Yeah. 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 But that doesn't make that right. 
But let's let the police department have their shot at taking care of it. If they come back to the council, the council can revisit. And so can you. Else. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. If that, if that doesn't work, you, if that doesn't doesn't work you all come back. That's what I said. Yeah, they can come back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You all have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good evening. Um, I talked with uh, Mitzi Dell at uh, Red Scout today, and it looks like April 9th will be the next bit of that, with the state giving them the uh, approval to individually solicit. They sat down with MoDOT and got a number of 6,200 different construction companies across the United States. They've solicited, sent out over uh, close to 200, and uh, Mitzi said today that her email is blowing up with re uh, requests of information. What time on April the 9th? Uh, 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that that didn't happen before. Well, but you had a different, this way they were able to you know, individually go, like she told me this afternoon that she contacted a uh, union in St. Louis because we're going to have to pay union wages no matter what. Uh, so uh, she contacted one of them and they sent it out through their union and boom, 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 you know, People are, you know, requesting information left and right. So, uh, um, so it's looking really good to, uh, you know, have multiples. Maybe we'll get that big now. Yep. So, all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Doctor. Anyone else? Okay. Council, have anything you need to bring up? Not to end the session. We're going to close session. Motion. Yes. 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 Yes.